Dwani, you can start. Good morning, one and all. We are extremely pleased to have with us Mr. Nishant Venugopal, who is someone who had quit his 15-year-old job as a producer in the leading English news channel to pursue his passion for nature and wildlife conservation. He is an avid nature photographer, writes poetry and po prose that focuses on nature and conversation. Conservation, I'm sorry and uses his website and social media channels to encourage people to observe and conserve nature. He likes to use his pictures, words, and platform to voice the species who can't speak for themselves. His articles and poems have been featured on websites such as Lonely Conservationist, Science Next Door, The Falls Trail, Kate on Conservation, Spillworths, Conservation Optimism, East Mojo, etc. He was selected as a savorist web wildlife magazine's gallery member of the month for march 2020 and his interview was published in the magazine recently his blog got published in a book named the secret life of conservationists by lonely conservationists he is currently working on a website that combines pictures literature and works related to conservation and the animal kingdom he is an amateur for nature photographer and finds happiness in clicking moments that matter and loves to share and educate about them he also volunteers with the world wildlife fund and fancies himself an occasional traveler the Sunday special sessions by the Biodiversity Cell of the SIU focus on sharing the journeys and knowledge gained by nature enthusiasts such as Sir, and we are we have the pleasure of his company today. Thank you and welcome. Thank you very much for Please giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you for Symbiosis Biodiversity Cell. Uh, let me st uh, I mean, I am very happy to see young children also here. <laughs> I, uh, as I told, I am a bit nervous too, because uh, the thing is that I have presented it in such a way that uh, it is for PG and the graduate students. Yeah, I will try as much as possible to make it simple, but I am happy that they are there because they also have an important role in the journey that I am taking right now. Uh, I will share my uh, screen right now. I hope uh, it is aud audible to everyone. Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. As the slide shows, this is the journey of a nature enthusiast through pictures, poetry, prose, and posts. This is the way that I try to express my passion, passion towards nature. I, Nishan Gopal, used to, as, a, uh, as I was introduced, I used to work as a news producer for 15 years. I would consider that age as something like a caterpillar in cocoon. I was just uh, trying to burst open and become a butterfly. So, first, I will just show this small uh, slide. This is actually cave paintings from Bimbedka rock shelters in central India, Madhya Pradesh. This is to show that storytelling has been in human civilization for quite a long time. They used to record things and share the story with others. Now, when we come to this generation, the important storytelling tool is social media. Many use story, uh, social media to communicate. It is a powerful medium to communicate. But I, I emphasize on this point that with power, there comes responsibility too. There are various benefits for social networking. It can reach people. And using hashtags and mentions, you can make cross-references that will encourage conservation initiatives. Now, how social media helped me is I am trying to depict it with this quote from Baba Diyum, a Senegalese conservationist. In the end, we will conserve only what we love. We love only what we understand and we will understand only what we thought. And using social media to teach people or to inspire them to observe the nature around them is what I would like to do. First of all, I will start with these tiny hatchlings. This was 
my first trip as a nature enthusiast after leaving my job my first intention was to go to see the olive redly olive redlies in their aribada do you know what aribada is aribada is the mass nesting behavior of olive redlies it is a very very important crucial part of their life but the day of resignation was not at par at time with the aribada so i just have to wait to see when these turtles are hatching thankfully when i was there in odisha during this time the turtles were hatch hatching was happening but one thing was unsure about it that there was prediction of climate change you know that the hatching of turtles it, it depend upon the climate the temperature have a significant role in hatching so we were not sure whether i will be able to see that event but when i was there thankfully the sky was clear and i was able to see it and i was really inspired by the perseverance that this tiny little hatchlings had just a day after they hatched they had a kind of instinct to go near the sea because they knew that going to sea is what their life depend upon but they had a lot of hurdles in between they stayed focused and moved ahead the interesting thing that i saw at that time was whenever they reached the waves the waves threw them back to the land it is as if the wave was trying to test their patience and strength even in sea or ocean there are predators these tiny hatchlings if they have to survive they have to get the strength to swim they have to get the courage to move on and this is what the nature's first lesson not only for turtles but for me too when you are in such a important location there are cases like you might have heard about spider sense everybody know about spider man i feel that there is something called nature sense too your senses heighten to that location and that event so you might see lot of images like in this case when a fish is out of sea it loses its life while the turtle is moving towards the sea because he want to or it want to get its life back similarly there is race to survive also there are lot of setbacks there are lot of hurdles even plastic nets were there thankfully there were awareness there were volunteers who were trying to help the turtles as you can see here some turtles unfortunately get caught on net so these trained volunteers i am emphasizing this word trained volunteers are able to take them out of these nets nets and then put them back on sea even i also found some and i gave the intimation to these volunteers because it's a beach and it is quite long so from where these turtles are coming nobody knows so this rescue campaigns and awareness operations were happening simultaneously and you must understand we get lot of information from the about plan plus plastic menace climate change habitat destruction over exploitation of sea resources that is bycatch i will tell you what bycatch is bycatch mean when you are taking fish out of the sea in large quantity there are other organisms too that get caught from the sea and since they have no value people generally throw them back but some in that pressure in in that uh, uh, unfortunate hustle with the nets lose their life but the list goes on so when you are writing about them you have some lessons to prepare first thing is there is no shortcuts research really matters you can you have to develop your skills with drills it is like this read write and speak read write and speak you continue this process till you get confident and 
one sudden day you are not going to be a writer but you have to start it the best time is now if you like to write you can write it you can write it in your notebooks you can write it in your social media anything but remember along with that you have to observe and listen to others it is not just your own thoughts you just have to put facts also in it and to blend aesthetics with ethics you need creativity but creativity should not go overboard it should have some facts in it so assimilating and contemplating whatever you have received is important finally i managed to write these two baby's day out and turtle overwork baby's day out was mainly a blog on the struggle of the little hatchling at that time when it was in the first day of its journey and similarly a poem on sea turtle and its issue that they face in their life cycle was published both in spillwords.com now i think most of the kids here will be interested in this there is a book called the very hungry caterpillar by eric carr parents and most probably those who have siblings know about this book but that hungry caterpillar eat a lot of things it eat ice cream it eat cake it eat lot of other confectionery items too unfortunately some ideas that we get from the childhood remains with us so i when i got an opportunity to involve in butterfly conservation efforts i really want to connect the host plant and the butterflies so everybody love to see butterfly they are beautiful but before butterfly they are caterpillars and caterpillars need host plants here you can see a beautiful butterfly this is called common marman and one of its host plant is curry leaf plant you see curry leaf plant which is generally an important culinary ingredient something that we use in our food so next time when you go to a curry leaf plant beware you might find small eggs like this that i have given the picture over here during lockdown period before that i was traveling during lockdown period i could not i have to stay at home and i was looking for objects or looking looking for subjects suddenly i noticed this small little egg and then nishan start, yeah uh, can you show the egg because i can see it but i don't know many of them they can't identify it this is the egg uh, is the marker there can you see yes it? yes this small little egg okay sorry okay this small little egg it is quite small you just have to notice it because i i was there when this common marman butterfly was roam, flying around this tree uh, sorry this plant so i knew that there is a chance of egg laying and even i had a video later on of them laying egg but it needs keen observation to find this small egg similarly are the eggs of butterfly so you have to be very careful first you need to know which is the host plant of these uh, butterflies then if you have it in your uh, uh, garden or in your backyard even in your park you might find little things like this can i continue thank you so later on you can see i am using a magnifying glass to show how small this caterpillar is for a regular person it might look like birds poop or something like that so they might they might disregard it and they might use this curry leaf for food unfortunately i mean that is not good for the caterpillar and for sometimes for us also but still i am saying that uh, if you start noticing such small things you can relate them and weave a story around them so observing the development of caterpillar daily and taking note was my of my uh, work for few days during the lockdown 
Now later on, everybody know about the life cycle of butterfly. Metamorphosis. Egg, caterpillar, caterpillar eats a lot of leaves. It poops, then it eats, it poops, then it eats, it carry on. This continuous journey carry on. But as you can see, it is not a single day affair. It took nearly 17 to 18 days for this caterpillar to change from the image that I have shown above to below. Now this is in its full form. Even now, for two days, it will be in this. Now, in, if anybody who uh, are there will see this caterpillar visible. But generally what happens is that even if it is moth caterpillar or butterfly caterpillar, people are not that much keen to see a caterpillar in their plant. I would say you give them time, they will turn into beautiful moths or butterflies. So patience pays in development. Connecting elements of nature and their struggle to survive was my thing. And I got a wonderful website where I can share this story. So I had to talk to them and see how can I get this narrative into their website. Finally, Conservation Optimism, this website took my story. It was known as Nature's Lesson During Lockdown. And it was the detailed narration of Caterpillar and its journey to become a butterfly. There was one poem also that I wrote in my experience. And it was, it got second prize in the journaling contest during the Big Butterfly Month, India 2020. It was also published in Science Next Door website. Now I go to one important topic that I always discuss with people who get involved with social media. There are two ways you can see when you get a want to respond to some event or some news in social media, either you can react or respond. There are two ways. Reaction is a sudden thing which is governed by emotions. And what happened is, happens is that you might have said whatever you want, but it will remain as one of the, uh, I mean, one of the uh, comments in that website, uh, in that uh, social media page. Apart from that, there is no life for it. It has lesser impact and sometimes it is destructive to creativity. Also one thing, also one thing that you need to understand is that be careful when you are interacting with such stories. The AI, that is artificial intelligence or the algorithm of the social media channel thinks that this one is very important. It is trending. The word trending itself sometimes shows us that it will pick up only things that is negative. So you start seeing only negative things. When I come to response, it is, as I said, assimilate the information. Then you try to write it down in a more well-mannered way with all the points taken into note. It is not a sudden emotional response. It is an intelligent response. And there will be sure, I'm sure there will be desired outcome. It will be sustainable and it has, it also help you in creativity. For example, I will tell you these two stories that I have written. There are a lot of social media accounts in where you can see about how uh, uh, some, some kind of uh, activity is destroying the uh, region, uh, ec ecology of that region, environment of that region. Or sometimes you can see some stories where animal is being uh, uh, attacked. But when you respond to that in that page, that page gets view. And that page is repeatedly seen by others. But when you take the information and try to figure a way in which you can present it to others also, you can put the facts and truth behind it. I always believe there is always an another part to every story. And social media, unfortunately, due to lack of time and their Insta 
compact format, they cannot completely tell the whole story. We have to be careful in this point. They always, I mean, it is not their fault, but that is how this format is. People want Insta information and Insta information sometimes doesn't contain all the information that needed for a person to make a sensible decision about an issue. So now I will come to a similar story. You might have heard about the space race that happened during millionaires or billionaires or you can say the most rich people at the time when the world was going through this COVID crisis. Now, I definitely got a lot of points about this and I wrote this small poem which says, race is on but time is running out. It is about the connection of science. You see, science is a double-edged sword. Similar is social media. The person who, who discovered atom can use it either for nuclear energy or to make atom bombs. So you have to be very careful how to use these two things. So this is how it goes. Is it, near, is it merely a race to go on to space? Or is it mankind's conscious escape from the reality that they have to face? When world population still facing a catastrophe, some are trying to compete to grab attention during this calamity. To prove anything is possible, if you have a lot of money, it is difficult to understand why they are in such a hurry. Media marketing for such misplaced priorities, is it because they love such existential ironies? Some people love burning away their cash, firecrackers to anything that can add so much trash. Earth has been waiting for long to humans to realize there are more benefits for using science. It is now or never for us to look forward towards nature-based solutions. Let's leave the pride and idea that can create destruction and too much confusion. This is just an excerpt of the poem that was published in Science Next Door. I hope you got the idea how media use it. Everybody is working most of the time to the pace of money rather than pace of nature. Pace of nature is slow, but it is sustainable. And that is what I would like to emphasize here. Now, when I come to journey, you never know where you get visual cues. I am a photographer at first. It is my photography that led me to become a volunteer and then a writer. So wherever I go, I observe. You don't have to go to a wildlife habitat to see how nature interacts with human interface. You just have to be human commodities. You just have to be observing in your own household. You will see. Like this bee, which was roaming around, flying around this bulb. You know, one of the main issues that insects face is light pollution. So I really want to put this light pollution angle with bees. So I wrote a poem on it. And the other one, definitely everybody knows how road and wildlife have a love and hate relationship between each other. So this is one of the uh, incident. And I must admit, animals are adapting to the ways, but we are very fast, very fast in changing the ter terrains. That is where animals are really getting confused. The other one, plea of Himalayan murmur, you might not see the image, a full image here, but actually a person was trying to touch this murmur. One of the serious things that I always insist others to be careful about. These animals are not cute and cuddly. They might look like that, but they are wild animals. Feeding them, teasing them, it should not be allowed. It changes their habits and in, in the process also their habitats too. So this 
take me to this uh, thing that I found, that observed during one of my journey. A jackal family crossing the road while two were looking on the other side and one looking towards the camera. So, as I told you, urban fauna too is adapting to and, uh, people's life. But the change is too fast. And unfortunately, there are road kills that uh, I have seen of this jackal itself. In this poem, I have tried to relate this incident. So there is positive and negative interaction between human and animals that we have to be careful about. Many of the social media emphasizes on the negative interaction. There are positive interactions too. Now, everybody, when they are in a wildlife habitat, their keen intention is to see a tiger. Even if it is not a tiger habitat, they think when they get into Jeep, the tiger will come in front of them. And it is also sure that it is like a question that you see from every guide that or every person who passes uh, opposite to you. Tiger dekha kya? So this was one thing that struck my mind. And as you can see in this photo, this is a uh, gate in Rantambur. And two tigers were sleeping on that the gate or over the gate. And people were waiting to see it. You can see the crowd over there. They, I mean, some people started becoming uh, less patient. And that is also an issue. When they start shouting, the tigers, they, tigers are wild animals and they don't want to be seen by humans. They have been, I mean, you can say genetically, I mean, imprint in their mind or in their body that humans mean danger. So how can, when you shout, the tigers will come in front of you. You have to be silent. You have to be patient. As I told you, that is the rhythm of nature. That is the pace of nature. And we must respect the wildlife habitats. So you also have to keep your eyes and ears open because there is more to see than tiger in a wildlife habitat. You see, as this image shows, this Sloth bear in a tiger territory is more valuable than a tiger because sloths don't come out when it, it is in, when, it, when it is morning because they know they have a danger from tigers. There is mongoose, there are langoose. These owls, I have to be grateful to the naturalist who really was there with me and she herself was so well aware of the place that she got a small, as I told you, the nature sense kicked in her mind and helped to show that there is something new in that foliage. We were actually running, passing to see another tiger. She asked us to stop. And when we stopped, we saw these two dusky eagle owls, which is also a wonderful sight in a wildlife habitat. But definitely I am a wildlife enthusiast and I also want to see tiger. If I say I don't want to see tiger, that is wrong. I am in Rantambur, I also want to see tiger. In this story also, we were there with other jeeps. The tiger was there in the pool, relaxing. The tigress, it's a subadult female. So it was relaxing. Suddenly people started becoming... I mean, in the sense, anxious. They were saying there is no action. Action, where is hunting? If you want to see hunting, if you want to see something else, you will have to see it in TV. You are not going to see in wildlife habitat. You just have to respect their habits. Okay? Or even in zoo. Unfortunately, even in zoo also, I have seen. Since kid this year, I am telling, narrating an incident. Kids are here, I am narrating an incident. Whenever you go to zoo, please, Please don't shout in front of cage of animals. These animals, they are wild animals and they are born free. They want to roam freely. They are under a cage. And believe me, it is very painful to see them uh, roaming around like this. So as I could say, and when people shout, they get agitated, they get stressed. So you have to be very careful about such things. 
And when I also encountered such behavior from kids, I informed the teachers there that please, please be quiet because you just have to respect that animal. And now when I come to this story, later on what happened was that we went in search of another uh, tiger family. But the naturalist that I told you really wanted to be there in that location. She told us that we can go back and stay there. When we went there, there were no other jeeps. We switched off our jeep and waited for a while. And as you can see, suddenly the nature unfurled in front of us like these peacocks came. There were, I mean, the pool that the tiger was uh, uh, lying around, in the same pool, there were crocodiles too. But since this apex predator of Rantambor was there, they were lying low. So sometimes they come up because when the birds were trying to catch these insects in the water, they were also trying to catch this bird. But because tiger was there, they were not that confident. So sometimes they come up and go down. So I did get some pictures, but it was not that much visible. But it, it was really an interesting feel that when you are staying there in silence and observing nature. So later on, I tried to collaborate everything and then try to publish it. Dates and events matter. Since tiger is our national animal, I wanted this to be published on Republic Day. Thankfully, K-Town Conservation, one other organization, published it as a guest post. Now we come back to again social media marketing. You know about social media monitoring, where the focus is mainly about campaign, institution, and brands. But there is another thing called social media listening, where you can listen to what is happening and find interesting trends. This will help you to collaborate, to source information, need to check. I mean, I am not talking about generally what we get in WhatsApp, but I am talking about reliable sources. We have to ensure that the sources are reliable and also to look out for special days. As I told you earlier, special days are days where you can plug in your story, the idea gets a maximum view. So this journey had many milestones. I started as a traveler, then I volunteered, then I became a communicator. And each and every place, I am really gra grateful to those who have been with me, who have taught me, and who have also worked with me. Keeping this in mind, I was able to send some post photos to the Savers Wildlife magazine. And finally, they selected me as the gallery member of the month. And they posted some of the stories with some questions that is related to wildlife. This year, I mean, it is just beginning, but last year, actually, there were many other events too. Like I was the guest editor for UN Biodiversity. Then my poems started publishing in Science Next Door. SITSAI India, it is a citizen science initiative. And if you go to their website, believe me, you will find at least one species that you like and a citizen science initiative related to it. And it is a great way to get involved in conservation. Anybody can, and I will talk to you about this later. Also, my story as a wildlife enthusiast, my journey was published in this book, Secret Life of Conservationist. The pandemic crisis was very hard on me. I had a lot of plans before that, but nothing worked out. But being a nature enthusiast and being with nature helped me to it I reinvented myself. It helped me to recover, focusing on urban biodiversity. This is an excerpt from my poem, Life and Learning with Nature. This is a hobby that you can have 
at any time of the year. Age is not an issue, whether you are older or younger. All that need are your attentive eyes and ears, an open mind to accept whatever nature offers, from the balcony garden to protected habitats that you can reach. Look out for mysteries and lessons that nature you can teach. Nature can teach. Believe me, nature is a best teacher, and you will find something. Whatever age you are, whatever way you are uh, busy with, whatever job you are, you might find something about management, about uh, science, about life from nature. Another interesting thing when I involved in science, uh, citizen science initiative is that, like this, I found this butterfly by chance. I was not able to, I was not able to travel anywhere, so I was just going through my society, and I saw this not that interesting butterfly. But my hunch said, as I told, the nature sense told me that this is something different. So I took a photograph. And when I shared it with my butterfly enthusiasts and others, it was found that this Indian oak blue species, which generally stays in hilly areas, this is the first ever documented record of this species in Delhi. For me, as you said, any new discovery will bring your enthusiasm manifold. It will increase your mental enthusiasm. And I always think that you can too be part of this. And I hope we will find many more things like this. Now about the viral messages I said. It is not only bad, but some good too. Two things that always get my attention. Like this image of an elephant carrying a lion cub. And you can see the description of it. Unfortunately, it was a neutral force joke. And even now, I get this viral image because I am a nature enthusiast and everybody knows it, this image to my head. The problem is that such images actually take space. They actually try to overshadow the real issues of conservation. Definitely, there are good stories. There are few good animal interactions. But something like this is actually not going to help conservation. You have to be careful about it. So when I saw similar video about uh, which got viral of a kid and a bear cub, this happened in India. I wrote to this website, East Nojo, which was in Northeast. I found this video somewhere in Northeast. Definitely, the uh, forest division of that area intervened, and the bear is now in zoo. But the reactions that I saw behind it was really disturbing. That was like, oh, how cute it is. Oh, I want to have a bear cub like this. That is where the trap lies. It is not the trap for only people, but also for the animals, wildlife, prey lives and thrives in such comments. You have to be careful. So res with research, I got some material about it and published a the not so cute truth about wildlife viral videos. Here, I have used articles of Dr. Jane Gundal. Many might have seen the image of a chimpanzee scrolling the phone. It was also viral. And how Dr. Jane Gunda said it is an unnatural setting image and how it is not helping the wildlife. Similarly, there were investigative reports in National Geographic titled Suffered un Suffering Unseen the Dark Truth Behind the Wildlife Tourism. The Water Cafe of Mugabe.com uh, also specifies about how otters are used as a cute and cuddly image. Cute and cuddly images of otters are actually increasing the wildlife trade of otters. So you have to be careful. Otters are actually the apex predators of river system. And like tiger for the forest is the otters for the river. If otters are out of the river, 
that will destroy that ecosystem. So we need them in rivers, not in our house. You have to plant stories in various platforms. So as you can see, there are various. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to diversify. And depending upon taste, people will look into various options. There is one about children and nature, a website which caters to children where I wrote about these great Indian bustards. You know the great Indian bustard are critically endangered species. And how the grassland habitats are very important for them. It is not just for great Indian bustard. There are thriving, there are a lot of other species that depend on this grassland habitat. And unfortunately, grasslands and wetlands were earlier not considered to be wildlife habitats. They were wastelands. And people used to use it either for agricultural use or to dump waste. Now, thankfully, there are a lot of organizations who are creating awareness about it. And we just have to understand, we behave. I mean, this is, I'm at a quote of a child from a UN assembly where she said, if you don't know how to fix it, then please don't break it. We need to understand that these ecosystems are quite crucial for our existence. So you better be careful when you deal with it. There is also some species which are battling age-old prejudices that can be snakes and bats. Bats are unfortunately nowadays victim of COVID too. It is true that they, ha they have the immunity or ability to play host for various viruses. But one thing, the other part of the story that people forget to tell is that it is only when humans and bats interact, I emphasize this word, interact, that the issue happens. So if we give them their peace and space, definitely there is no problem. And for ages, we have been living, coexisting with them. So I don't think it is good to victimize one species for a mistake that is actually, I would call, a man-made crisis. There are various other points that I have wrote on biodiversity. It includes, I mean, one of the important birds that I would like to emphasize is the hornbills. They are, to me, like dedicated dads. And remember, that is also important because if the male hornbill, during the nesting time, gets uh, unfortunately away from the nesting, then the family will starve. So they need their nesting grounds, they need their wood, wood habitats, and they are specialist nesters. You have to keep this in mind. You might be able to create nests for small birds, but these large birds who are also seed dispersers, who are also the engineers of forests, require their habitats. Similarly, there is one on the urban a clash between pigeons and mankind. The dropping thought, which means that it is true that there is affinity of people towards certain species because they are accessible to us. It is not that like wildlife and they also thrive on it. Now there is something called synanthropy, the organisms that really get benefited by, by humans. But you must understand, when you are supporting one species, you are actually taking away the home of another. That is not balance. You have to create the balance and you have to be careful what to do and what not to. It is actually a permutation combination and you have to work it out. If you give support too much, too much support for certain species because you can help it, that's that doesn't, I mean, it will take the space of another species and unfortunately that species goes extinct. As you can see, the state of bird, the state of bird report that came in, it also talks various points about it. I would uh, request those who are interested in birding, go through the state of bird report and you will know even sparrows too nowadays, they are there, they are there, they are not visible in our, nearby our home because our home is not compatible for them. 
but they are surviving they are thriving but there are other species also urban birds who need some kind of attention we need to give them also attention that is what i would like to say there are lesser known species too and even geckos for that matter is important to us many people have this kind of paranoia towards geckos but i feel that they are the best pest controllers in the world if they are not there half of this world or trees would be scorched by insects they take out the maximum number of insects they take the spiders take out the maximum number of insects so you have to be careful about them too these are wildlife in our home so you have to be careful about that thank you to science next door that i was able to publish 45th poem here i want to stress one point and that is until and unless you have a deadline as a writer until and unless you have a deadline you won't be able to write something so when science next door approached me to write poem for them i was not that much confident because i do have material but i was not sure but the as it go go went on i really started getting ideas and i was able to incorporate it so those who are writers you have to start writing somewhere either in notepad or in your computer uh, notepads or even in your email so that eventually you find a way to express it so the recent points that i have is about squirrel diversity even squirrels too i mean in the sense you might see two squirrels only generally in south we have the three striped and in north we have the five striped there are other squirrels too which also need require attention there is jungle squirrel so there are lot of other organizations who are working to create awareness about this squirrel species then the drongo drongo i am very keen on bird behavior i have seen lot the, how the birds uh react to various situation and drongo for me was one such bird the feeling of fallen leaves is actually i tried to connect the emphasis on invasive species and also the native species and the life cycle of leaf everybody knows about photosynthesis but do you know that it is not a single leaf that is creating the magic that is keeping the tree sustainable it is actually a community of leaf so that is what i want to emphasize it is only a community can take a cause forward there is also instinct of mother nature that i found while my journey like this macaque who is trying to mother macaque was trying to console the baby because of the fact that there was some tussle happening between the resident group and the uh, visitor group of macaques and you see generally it is said it is not it is harmful for kids if the visitor group wins and take over the place so the kid was quite nervous and the mother was holding it similarly the case of mother bear in wild it is mothers who have great responsibility to bring up the offspring and they have to face not only predators also the competition from their own species and they have to keep themselves also fit to take care of their baby it is really impressive stories that you can hear from by only if you give you don't focus on a charismatic species and go and listen from the naturalist or the guides over there as i told you the great indian buster story silonian which is actually the scientific name for the group of freshwater turtles tortoises and even the sea water turtles i i would say freshwater turtles and tortoises are also lesser known species and some of them are critically endangered earlier in most of the household they used to have ponds and used to we used to have various type of turtles and tortoises tortoises around them now as you see in this picture this is an elongated tortoise 
to see it in a habitat is just like seeing a tiger this creature is actually critically endangered and unfortunately as i told you i am relating it to the previous point pet trade is one of the reason for this species to go extinct we must understand every species has its own ecological need it needs some kind of certain kind of food it needs certain kind of habitat to thrive we have only very less knowledge about nature in many of the species cases so researchers are trying their best to get but whatever the pets the pets that we keep we if especially things like this are not only harmful for us but also for them also because definitely we cannot cater to their ecological needs similarly earthworm those who are actually into waste management and composting they know how earthworm is important for nature they are the actually the fertilizing generating machines and they also form an important part of the food chain so i really tried i this idea i got when i saw during the rainy season in roads roads the vehicles crash some of the earthworm they really cannot go inside the uh, soil to save themselves so they have to travel through these tar roads and i have seen many such events so i felt that i need to put this point and i did it so now it is sure that the earth is a community system works like a community system it is one for all and all for one so we we are also part of it we humans are also part of it so we have to be careful and why i am telling this to kids and people like you is that this quote which was attributed to benjamin franklin and also it is part of chinese proverb says you teach me i forget you show me i remember you involve me i understand and as i say the jain gundal's quote connect both of them if only if we understand we care only if we care will we help and only if we help shall be all be saved so remember that we need to find connection between nature and species now when i was thinking about then, it, uh, I, yeah. uh, nisha uh, excuse me i think uh, we have exceeded the time so you can take it as means uh, you want to yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Just thank you very it. much thank you very much yeah thank you very much so as you can see in this poem i tried to give a an idea of why there is priorities and uh, as you can say an important thing about uh, priorities and also uh, the necessities of earth so i will take four lines of this you can read this poem that is when the forest is are on fire why do i care no connectivity to my phone in my phone is what gives me scare melting of polar ice caps why do i care i worried about the impact of electric bill on my monthly budget and share similarly i tried to put an angle where you can see the priorities and necessities are different and you just have to find a common point to get include sustainability in this area mental health is also an important issue when you are dealing with nature you get a lot of stories so i tried to write about them also so thoughts about social network and about the, the covid pandemic was one of them and along with that one thing that i came to write is about uh, as i told you for this lonely conservationist you can go to this book and you can see there are 42 such stories about people all around the world who are involved with conservation and what are the issues they are facing so now almost i am concluding this session so i will tell this quote by rachel carson who was the american conservationist the author of silent spring those who dwell as scientists or laymen among the beauties and mysteries of earth 
are never alone or weary of life. Whatever the vexations and concerns of their personal lives, their thoughts can find path that lead to inner contentment and to renewed excitement in living. Remember, nature can help in this case. And as you know, the UN Sustainability Development Goal has given importance to three things. That is people, planet, partnership, and peace and prosperity. Without peace and prosperity, it is difficult to involve people in planet-saving initiatives. So you have to find a way for this. This leads to the seven pledges that I have taken, which is related to what points I have told earlier. One is to share nature information and counter misinformation. Second is about burning crackers and uh, it, how it is uh, harmful for nature. Third is to find an eco-friendly home stays. When you are traveling, you have to find stays which are actually giving importance to nature and its sustainable future. Our local language too plays an important role. There are a lot of information in local languages that we need to understand. And that actually gives a connect to many people who are actually in fringe villages. When you talk to them in their local language or talk to them about species in their local name, this is an instance where I would say, when I gave the name of uh, nearly 40 species in my home with their local name, my family members were also happy because they now know that these are the birds and these are their call. And this is how you can also, in your home, you can do. You go and observe the birds and try to find their local name. Plastic material in the wildlife habitat. Another issue, citizen science initiative is the best way to involve people. Third, last and the not but not the least, to manage and use social media responsibility. Not to react impulsively for social media, we in social media and use social media as a learning platform with the help of reliable sources. With this, I conclude this session and I hope you have got some idea about my journey as a nature enthusiast. Nature is evolving, so am I. There are a lot of things yet to learn for me. And I really wish I could be in each and every place to record the biodiversity. But I can't do that. But each person who is here right now can do this and help to create an awareness about biodiversity to people. And that is what... I want to say, observe the nature around you, try to preserve the records in various modes and also help to conserve. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, Symbiosis International University, and I am sure I will, I have, I will be able to clear some doubts that is coming later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nishan. Thank you very much. I can, can I, say, yes, yes, yeah, Nishan. Can I stop sharing? Uh, uh, yes, yes, you oh, can. Thank you. So what I can see and feel listening to you uh, and your seeing, watching your PPT, uh, when you talk, I can see that each and every PPT or line you have uh, presented, you are, you are talking from your belly. So that passion we can see inside and you want you. to get it through. Uh, so thank you very much for this wonderful session. Uh, so now I will um, unmute because I had muted uh, everyone. I'll unmute and I'll open the chat box also. So, uh, if you have any questions, you want to ask any doubts to Nishant about writing, about poetry, about his journey as a newcomer, uh, you can ask. Others, you can keep yourself unmute and those who only want to ask question or anything, uh, you can mute, uh, unmute yourself. But others, all keep yourself in mute. Dhwani, I think you have added feedback form also. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. But I'll share the link in the chat, and everyone can access it from there. Okay. Yeah, we do request everyone to do fill the feedback form. I just, if there are no questions, I guess we can move ahead. I do have one question, sir. So I would like to know more, like, um, as like someone who writes about nature, what do you feel is your biggest news when it comes to it? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? I just had some... Like, mental... you write a lot about nature and, I mean, what truly, you know, inspired you to start exploring that? Yeah, uh, as I told you, photography was my passion. I mean, I started as a photographer, but eventually when I started birding, mainly birding, that I started connecting dots. So it was uh, uh, birding, then uh, I went to insects, and currently, I am trying to learn more about trees too. But as you know, it takes time. Definitely, it takes time. And one thing that always keeps me excited is that there is something new every day if you observe nature. You might see the same bird, but it will be behaving differently in one day. It will be different, uh, behaving. So every day, I try to make sure that using my camera, take one or two pictures and keep it. You never know. We, how, how these images later on help me to write. Right, sir. Thank you. And like we learned a lot from your session today. We learned, I mean, I personally feel like we just learned so much about storytelling and explaining just through the flow of your session. You know, the way you move through the different topics in this, this flow and it was really amazing and I love the examples of your work that you shared and I truly love to read more so I'll look up that and thank you so much for the session sir. I'm sure thank everyone you. else will learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you for hearing my presentation. I hope Before even a... uh, Sorry? I think our network is a little weak today. Thank you. I mean, I am glad that at least kids are staying so long. <laughs> it is really, it is, I mean, I know that uh, some of the points are not uh, in, but I always think as those who are present here, kids, you too have a very important role in this. I mean, so, Nisha, uh, even uh, can you give the link of your website in the chat box? Uh, yeah, of yeah. course, of course, of course. Yeah. So, those who are here, guys, uh, you have to visit uh, his website and uh, during uh, this presentation where he was uh, showing us uh, the PPTs where his uh, poems were mentioned I would really tell you means uh, recommend you go and read these poems keeps you engrossed till the end and uh, today when I was uh, watching your presentation, it was that particular poem which grabbed my attention was the six essences at one. Sorry? The, sn the snake speaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snake speaks. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, uh, this is also, uh, I mean, I just have to give credit to the uh, kind of volunteership uh, that I did with uh, WWF. We had this thing called Ek Prithvi Project in WWF, where we have to discuss to school kids about nature. So generally, there are various kind of, I mean, questions that come from them, which we have to figure a way to answer. So I tried to put all these things, the mix, myths actually, myths, and what are the facts about snakes in this poem. As much as to my knowledge, definitely there are a lot of things that researchers, I mean, you can go to Varad Giri, Varad sir, or you can uh, uh, talk to Rome sir. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 they, they are another level. So I, I am trying to do it in whatever way I can. And I hope, I mean, in the sense, one one way or another, I will be able to talk to them too, so that I get more information regarding this. So this is uh, some some way that we can. I, I that is what I am telling. You use social media to share such information. You can use stories 
there are a lot of organizations who always during especially during uh, occasions where snakes are not treated properly they send their uh, awareness campaign things if either some of you use them as stories in their social media handles most of the people will get to know it as i told you there is a circle everybody have this affinity towards nature especially kids they do love to be in nature unfortunately due to uh, current pandemic situation and due to technology we generally people are not that keen to send them out but i say that they have that link which due course of time when we are we get serious about our studies we get serious about our work and other thing we forget it i got an opportunity yeah. thankfully during this time to rekindle it i really want it to be rekindled in others too and science and art are two different subjects many people talk about it i am a science graduate but i use hard art to try to communicate with the science so if you want to get into people's heart you have to use art that is what i feel and i try to uh, emphasize this in whatever way possible so taking this link uh, i want to tell it each and every one uh, you take some time immediately after this session or today during the day when you are in this you know tempo of uh, nishan session please go and read few of his poems and then you will understand uh, really importance of uh, whatever he is talking today and let me tell you that uh, i had gone through many of his uh, poems since last one week and i had this one particular uh, idea also uh, that we are going to have a special session to read out few of his poems so that that that's the uh, you know push i got after reading his poem so i will tell you unless and until you won't read his poems you won't understand the importance of today's session so that's the thing uh, i really want to tell you from my end so i guess we have come to the end of the session we can take one or two quick questions though we have already thanked nishan but uh, I, i i just have to say one thing i mean i would also like to hear from i mean uh, shilpa ji told me that there are talented people who can recite poem uh, very 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 beautifully i mean i am not a, I'm, i might be a singer but i am not a, a good in reciting poem uh, and uh, especially i i really don't feel like hearing my voice itself so if somebody can recite it it would be great then i will be able to connect the poem with the points that made me write it it is a great idea shilpaji thank you very much so uh nisha let them read your poems go through your website let yes, them yes. think everything and i guess we are going to meet once again uh, soon in next few months uh, uh, i have actually post uh, sorry i i have actually posted my uh, handles where i am available so if there is any question they can take yeah. there also whatever way possible i will be able to help i will definitely do that thank you very much silpa yeah thanks so thank uh, you sir uh, can you can we open our videos for a last one screenshot as a group photo so uh, especially uh, my biodiversity club students uh, from those i can see some uh, familiar you know names here so can you open your videos pranjal now one thing Simbran. because kids are here i would like to emphasize the point i told earlier it was the i mean the, as i told you the incident of cage and the leopard it is it was really disturbing for me to see that i mean i don't blame the kids the thing is that the awareness issue is there these zoo animals are not for your entertainment they are for your education and remember that uh, they they are not there for as show animals our idea earlier was i mean should be to observe them and learn from them instead of 
thinking that they will do whatever you want to, them to do. True, true. I think, yes, the uh, smaller kids will definitely, uh, you know, uh, when next time they will go to zoo, they will uh, behave, <laughs> they will uh, see, observe, uh, just enjoy uh, the animal they are seeing and they won't disturb. And Nishan, uh, yes, we will have one special session for our school kids also someday. So that will be uh, helpful for them also. So yeah, let's, uh, this is the time to say bye. Next Sunday, again, we'll be meeting for uh, another session. Uh, so see you next Sunday. Thanks, thanks Nishan, thanks all the Thank participants. You Thank you. And Kunal, Dhwani and Ria. Thank you very much. Thank you Kunal, Dhwani and Ria. Thank you very much. Thank you Shilpaji. Thank you to everyone who have was present here and uh, heard my <laughs> presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. It was actually a great session today. Yeah, it truly really was. You can see his, uh, you know, um, we can say that uh, feeling, uh, that strong uh, uh, no passion. But, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> please don't do this, or please do this. And whatever journey he has gone through, he wants to take us all along that uh, for that journey. But I'll really, um, I'm, I'll tell you. Hi, Tanvi. Uh, please go and read these poems. Means, uh, um, you know, one fine day uh, he just messaged me a few of his poem, and I actually very casually I saw, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And then very casually I opened his poems after some time, and I was like, I couldn't stop. The poems are a bit long. They are, um, so you'll see if you go on his website, they are uh, very long versions, each and every poem. But, but they're simple to follow. The, yeah, they are very simple to follow and they are, you know, keep you engrossed and sometimes they make you chuckle, they make you giggle, they make you like, oh, they make you... But they make oh. you think as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you can, it's like, you know, on Instagram when you are surfing those, you know, photos. So his poems are like that. You just can't stop you know one by one one by one you can just keep on reading and uh, that's why yesterday i i told him that he was saying Ki, i'm not good in you know oration and i i, I am not good in reciting my poems also so i said Ki, tomorrow you give that session it's okay and uh, i really want uh, someday uh, we will have a special session to you know, reciting his poem so i'm looking forward for a few students i have few in my mind but even if any of your friends they are into poems or reciting let me know and we are going to have uh, one session of uh, poem reci recitation and uh, he will be one of the author in that so that will be a fantastic i think uh, session let's do that something different yes, of course like a poetry reading that would be wonderful yeah yeah okay then bye guys thanks, thanks.